It is Nicky Pedersen. What a lineup it is. Chris Harris going off gate two, Kenneth Pierre off three, and Greg Hancock off the outside. Yeah, this is quite a race. I was just keeping an eye on, uh, look how close uh, Greg Hancock is to the fence there. There's a lot of loose dirt lying out there that he seemed to pack into one of the ruts, hopefully to get another brilliant start off gate four like he did last time. Gate number 14 it is, and away from the start. Oh, it's Hancock gone. off gate number four. Now Pedersen is there, but Hancock gets the drop. Now can he go wide and around the outside of Harris? Yes, he can. Greg Hancock, sensational speedway. Pedersen goes wide. Harris is second, and Pedersen almost ends up in the fence. Harris holds second. Pierre is third. But the lead is with Greg Hancock, who is getting ever closer to winning the world title. If he's not putting anything on the line, he's certainly not showing it in this race. This was a, uh, a full tilt world championship, uh, possibly winning race for Greg Hancock. What a start from the outside, the American made there. In the, in the meanwhile, at the back here, Kenneth Pierre passes his uh, fellow countryman who repays the compliment, goes into turn three, ahead of Kenneth Pierre now into third place. A lot of action going on here, Harry's in second place, Pedersen in third, but it's Greg Hancock out in front riding a very smooth race on a very fast bike, Nigel. Yeah, Hancock looking good here, there's a battle at the back as well, Pedersen and Pierre, the two Danes having a go here. Going around turns three and four, Greg Hancock is on to 11, Harris is on to 11 and a real battle for third place there between Nicky Pedersen and Kenneth Pierre, but the story is Greg Hancock, he's going to be world champion, 11 points tonight, another massive step towards winning the world speedway title, a man who has that knee injury. And now, he's getting ever closer. It still looks as though Yara Campbell will get into the semi-finals. Hancock knows his work is done. He knows that Ampel won't catch him. And it's Greg Hancock who is the World Speedway Champion for 2011. His work is done ahead of the semi-finals. How he'd love to win the Grand Prix, but he knows the job is done yet. Fantastic pictures. You know, Greg Hancock comes out on the track to take the applause of the crowd here. Everybody knows there's uh, stars and stripes um, waving all over the place. The fact that Yara Campbell dropped a point there, of course, reduced Hancock's target. He knows he's got it. The celebrations can begin. The stars and stripes flag is flying high. It's happy days for Greg Hancock. Just that one point. And the fact that Hampel dropped a point as well. And coming out now are past world champions onto the track. Jason Krupp. Nicky Pedersen and Thomas Gollop are all coming out onto the track with Chris Harris because they know it's a moment of celebration and he is such a hugely popular character. Pedersen congratulates him. Crump, Gollop, Harris, they're all there. They know what a special moment this is. 14 years after the last world title. It's it a nice is picture. a fairy tale story. Nice picture, the outgoing world champion and the new one. Uh, both the same age group, it's, uh, it's amazing pictures. Here we go, getting the bumps, race director, Tony Olsen is there as well. Well, a man who we said halfway through last season he had to question his uh, Hample is credentials there as well. and Yara Campbell has pushed him up until now. It was Voyens two weeks ago when it was the defining moment for Hancock to go 31 clear of Hample. And I'm sure Yara Campbell's time will come, but what a moment! for Greg Hancock, World Speedway Champion for 2011. Jonsson congratulates him as well. As you can see, he's hugely popular with his fellow riders, Greg Hancock. And it is a special, special moment. He's without a doubt one of the most popular riders in the, in the pit lane. Uh, Chris Holder gets a hug. Fantastic pictures. Phil yeah. Rising there from the Speedway Star. Adding his congratulations to the new world champion. Kenneth Pierre's there, Carl Blumfeld with him as well, Andreas Johnson's manager, and engine tuner. And Greg Hancock, what a fantastic career he's had. 1997, he won the World Individual Championship for the first time with a sensational run of form. He actually claimed the title in Voyens in Denmark, but since then he's gone on to win Grand Prix. And Cardiff, Mr. Popular, one of the most popular riders with the British crowd, Greg Hancock, spent a large part of his career riding in the UK and has been just a glittering array of Grand Prix medals. He's ridden in every single Grand Prix throughout the history of the competition since its launch in 1995 and uh, down to success in Voyons a fortnight ago, Cardiff in the summer, this year has just been. Greg Hancock, 2011 World Speedway Champion.
That doesn't feel too bad. I, I, I can't say enough. Thanks, everybody. You know, that, uh, it'll set in in a few minutes, I think. I'm still pretty much stunned right now, but, uh, you know, it's been a long time. I remember the feeling, and uh, I really would like to get used to this. This is just fantastic. Absolutely. I mean, you, you spoke to me recently. We spent a day with you in Sweden. You said that sort of two-thirds of the way through last year, you remembered why you were doing this. You certainly remembered well. And it actually started here, you know, in Croatia. So uh, to get the world title here from where I, I kind of felt like I turned my career around again, it's, uh, it's awesome, you know. My wife wasn't here for the kids, but babe, I'll be home soon. Woo! And uh, you mentioned your wife and children, your family, but, you know, a huge team of people support you through this effort to get you to where you are today. Yeah, you know, it starts with my wife for sure. She's the, like, she's my therapist. She's everything. So uh, her and then, God damn, these, uh, these mechanics, they've worked their butt off for years. And um, Raphael's like, he's a brother. I'm a little emotional now. <laughs> They're the best. I can't thank them enough, man. Richard, Ando, thanks, you guys, everybody. And uh, you got a couple more rides left tonight. You could win another one of these things. Yeah, you know, I'm going to do everything to keep my head focused on this now, you know, but... Uh, I just want to go hug these guys for the next couple hours. <laughs> you guys start the hugging now. Well done. Congratulations, Greg. Thanks very much. Come on, Flubaz Piratana. The sweet taste of success for Greg Hancock. Let the celebrations begin. It's a champagne moment here in Gorjov. Well, the rain has been pouring down, and now it's raining champagne on the podium. <laughs> Uh, the rain actually momentarily stopped, but it's now raining again, and so, but they won't care. None of those boys will care, particularly the man on the top, Stefan Rostrum. And, you know, he's, uh, we're going to hear from him again. It'll be interesting to see exactly what he says now that he's finally got his hands on the World Championship trophy. But uh, there won't be uh, something that anybody's going to be aggrieved that uh, Greg Hancock is world champion for the second time. Of course, his best buddy, of course, Billy Hamill, was world champion back in 96. They rode together. I'm sure he'll be immensely proud of his uh, good friend, Greg Hancock, being able to secure a second world title. You'll know all about that. Of course, you would have watched those two boys roaring round Cradley Heath on many yeah. Saturday nights. Mm. Yeah, it was an uh, absolute delight to be involved there at Cradley all those years ago. I was actually the track announcer, and yeah. seeing the boys do the business in Cradley colours was something special. It was a great combination, Hancock and Hamill. And of course, uh, Cradley had Bruce Pennell as world champion as well, back in the early 80s. Oh, they had a fabulous run, didn't they? Eric Gunderson, Jano Pedersen, they had some wonderful riders there. And certainly Greg now is certainly one of those riders that will be revered in that part of the world, no question about that. They'll be desperate for him to come over and see him, there's no doubt about that. And it'll be interesting to see if he does come across to the UK and have a couple of outings. But he's going to be a wanted man. Every country in the world is going to want to see the world champion Greg Hancock racing. Yeah, absolutely pictures that you'll see in the Speedway Star magazine and on websites, newspapers all around the world. His family will be taking a photograph as well, I'm sure. <laughs> but uh, it is quite a story, 14 years and now the oldest ever world champion. In a sport where the demands have become greater, you have to be super fit. Yeah, to be, uh, to be a professional a speedway very rider. Very good point you've just come up with there. Every fortnight, you've got to be prepared to put your body on the line every time. You have to lift yourself for a huge effort every time. And this man at uh, 41 has still retained the enthusiasm, the belief to go on and do it. And uh, he's managed to do it, and he succeeded when everybody around him potentially last year. A lot of people were potentially riding in Belf, but uh, this year he's been absolutely inspired he's made great starts the confidence there often you know in, i remember the final in cardiff when nicky pedersen pushed them so hard in the first corner and hancock had the skill and the determination to roar around the outside to hit it get himself to the front and win again and yep that smile as you just said nights the sweet taste of success big time the grin and now the family arrive well, these will be very special shots for Greg that he'll, he'll be on the treasure for the rest they? of his <laughs> life. Yeah, absolutely. His wife, Jenny, and Wilbur and Bill, the children. Well, this is what it's all about. The family who made great sacrifices in support of a Speedway rider to back their man. What a special moment.
for family Hancock. Yeah, this seems to be extra special, doesn't it, when you consider the career of the man. And, uh, you know, against the odds, when a lot of people will have written him off, certainly in 2010, a lot of people have written him off, and he bounced back in fine style, refocused. I think, I think he hit the nail on the head, didn't he, when he talked about that the... Tak, ale muszą sobie też zdawać sprawę z tego, że Niki Petersen po doskonałym starcie może założyć Chris'a Holdera i wtedy będą z niecierpliwością czekali na finał, jeżeli by Holder do niego nie awansował. No zobaczymy jak to będzie. Czerwony kask. Widzimy. Tego Także na pewno wiadomo, kto ma brązowy medal, ale jeszcze nie wiadomo, to skończy ten sezon na najwyższym stopniu podium. Bartek Wieczorek jak zaczarowany patrzy na swojego szefa. W czerwonym holder, w niebieskim Niki Pedersen, w białym Sajfudino, w żółtym Lindbeck, drugi półfinał. I poszli Niki tak jak przewidziałeś, zakłada, ach, będzie tam crash, tak jest. No i teraz Craig Ekroyd wyklucza, obawiam się, obawiam się, że on będzie musiał podjąć tutaj decyzję która zostanie przyjęta, leży pod płotem, co nas martwi na brzuchu mm, Antonio Lindbeck, ale musi coś zrobić. Z kim on tam się konsultuje? Z Grahamem Brodym, z Mike'em Puzzlewhite'em, którzy siedzą, rzucają, lecą jakieś przedmioty z trybun w kierunku Nikiego Pedersena. To jest bardzo nieładny obrazek. No i patrzmy, co robi, ogląda, ogląda Craig Ackroyd powtórki. Ależ to jest sytuacja, no założył, pociągnęło, postawiło. Co byś zrobił na miejscu Craig'a? No, bardzo ciężka decyzja oczywiście, ale tutaj widzimy moment, kiedy, kiedy Chris Holder, jakby jego motocykl, traci kontrolę nad motocyklem, co... To będzie chyba kluczowe dla losów co, tej... Co, co spowodowało jakby upadek Niki Petersena, a zarazem przerwanie wyścigu, więc sprawcą przerwania wyścigu był Chris Holder. No, ale oczywiście sędzia ma jeszcze możliwość skorzystania z e, tak zwanej zasady pierwszego wirażu, więc co zrobi sędzia, dowiemy się za chwilę. I jest tam jakiś ruch, jest tam jakiś ruch, nie jest zapalona, zobacz Adam, nie jest zapalona żadna lampka, czyli co, powtórzył we czterech? No na pewno Niki Petersen nie będzie z tego faktu zadowolony. Za chwilę odniesie się do, nasze, do tej decyzji loża ekspertów. Proszę bardzo, powtórka we czterech rozmawia o tej decyzji z Tony Molsonem, a my prosimy yy, Rafała i Grzegorza. Rafał, Rafał krzyczał tutaj cały czas we czterech, we czterech, chociaż tutaj uważaliśmy też, że jednak rzeczywiście Chris Holter stracił kontrolę nad motocyklem. Jest prawo pierwszego wirażu. Proszę Cię, Rafał, abyś się do tego ustosunkował. Znaczy, o ile też Niki Pedersen Niki, Niki Petersen, nie wiem czy Państwo widzą to samo co ja, e, widzę na podglądzie rozmowę Niki Petersena z Chrisem Holderem. No to co wyprawia teraz Niki Petersen to jest po prostu, mam nadzieję, że to jest tylko sympatyczna rozmowa, ale to co w tej chwili robi Niki Petersen to jest, to nie przystoi takiemu zawodnikowi, to jest zawodnik, który jest, to jest straszne proszę Państwa, co ten zawodnik wyprawia. To... Naprawdę powiedzmy mistrz świata, były mistrz świata do młodego zawodnika, 12 lat starszy, taki, taki żużel pokazuje, takie pokazuje zachowanie. Straszna sprawa, straszny, straszna zła sytuacja. Szkoda, że musimy to komentować, prawda Rafale? No nie powinna się taka sytuacja zdarzyć, to są emocje, rozumiem, no ale powodylem całego zajścia był, no, no Niki nie, nie oszukujmy się, był Niki Peterson, Niki on tutaj podchodzi, niepotrzebnie tak. dyskutował z, z Holderem, wywołał całą tą sytuację i ona jest zupełnie niepotrzebna, ale wraca. Jest to nadal walka o mistrzostwo świata i e, cel uświęca środki, ale zobaczymy, e, czy Niki Petersen osiągnie swój cel. E, no mamy nadal możliwość oglądać e, e, tą walkę o mistrzostwo świata w sportowej rywalizacji. Oni już jeden taki spektakl nam przygotowali kiedyś, pamiętasz? To było Grand Prix w Kopenhadze w czerwcu, to w którym kontuzji uległ Jarek Hampel. Tam się przewracali, wstawali, za chwilę się krzyczeli na siebie, za chwilę się tulili, całowali na przeproszenie. Chris Holder w czerwonym, Niki Pedersen w niebieskim, Emil Sajfudinow w białym i Antonio Lindbeck w żółtym i teraz patrzymy na wewnętrzne pola startowe. 
co zrobi Chris Holder, czy tym razem nie wygrywa zdecydowanie start. Chris Holder, Niki Pedersen jest drugi, szarpie tam jego motocyklem. Lindbeck wyprzedza Nikiego Pedersena i stadion szaleje, bo Niki Pedersen spada na ostatnią pozycję. Lindbeck jest drugi, trzeci jest Emil, ale Emil zjeżdża do środka toru, jakby chciał tutaj zablokować, czy nie utrudniać sprawy Nikiemu Pedersenowi. Emil jest na zewnętrznej, będzie trzeci, czy będzie czwarty. Niki Pedersen, jeśli nie wejdzie do finału, a na razie jest trzeci, to za chwilę ta sprawa zostanie rozstrzygnięta prawdopodobnie. Już tam wielka radość w teamie Chrisa Holdera. Już to widać, co tam się dzieje w parku maszyn za barierką. Już przygotowane są specjalne koszulki na tą okazję. Za, yy, yy, ludzie z teamu Chrisa Holdera już rozpinają swoje kurtki i w zielonych kolorach koszulki, które mają tam już specjalne emblematy na pewno zaraz to zobaczymy co nam Nowy mistrz świata Chris Holder przyjechał w tym wyścigu półfinałowym przed Antonio Lindbeckiem, przed Nikim Pedersenem to ma mniejsze znaczenie i Emilem Sejfuddinowem ale oni teraz już go powitają podrzucą do góry, już wyskakują ci ludzie już mu zabiorą, teraz ściągną go z motocykla jest tam Jason Kram Chris Holder Mistrz świata Anno Domini 2012. Jest tam oczywiście Peter Jones. Są tam ludzie z teamu. Są tam ludzie z Australii. Tak jest, tak jest, tak jest. On to wie, nie musicie mu pokazywać, że to jest jedynka, bo on to wie. On już to, on już to rozumie. Jason Cramp. Teraz serdeczne, szczere gratulacje. Chris Holder, proszę Państwa. Nowy australijski mistrz świata. I był tam w obrazku Jason Cramp, czyli można powiedzieć odchodzi jeden król. Przekazał pałeczkę Przychodzi kilka drugi. minut temu. Przekazał ją teraz symbolicznie w godne tego ręce. Piąty australijski mistrz świata, proszę Państwa. Lionel Van Praak, kiedy Jako rozpoczynała pierwszy, się tak. ta rywalizacja w 36 roku. Później w 38. Blue A. Wilkinson. Jack Young w roku 51. I 52. Wojtek Stępniewski pogratulował już w tej chwili Chrisowi Holderowi. Miał płakać tamten, płacze ten. Zobacz, te oczy są szklane. Kończymy wymienianie mistrzów australijskich, bo już został nam tylko czwarty. Jason Cramp, 2004, 2006, 2009 i w 2012 roku, proszę Państwa, Australia ma piątego indywidualnego mistrza świata na żużlu. I rzut oka na to, co dzieje się w boksie Nikiego Pedersena. No przegrany, przegrany był ewidentnie ten start. To się wszystko skończyło. Gratulacje od y, ustępującego mistrza, więc od Grega Henkoka. Oddawaj motor i Tomasz Golop jest tam w pierwszej linii. Tyleż nerwów jeszcze 5 minut temu, a teraz tyle radości. Dziękujemy bardzo. Nowy mistrz. Słucham? Słucham? Dziękuję wszystkim, to jest dla mnie nie do uwierzenia Dziękuję wszystkim chłopakom, bo ciężko pracowali Jest tu ze mną cała rodzina I narzeczona Seli, i synek, Max I, i wszyscy Chris mówi, że nie wie jak to się stało Mówi, że większość to chyba zasługa małego Maxa Który się urodził na początku roku I to dało mu tak wielkiego powera I dlatego to wszystko się stało Dziękuję. Teraz było pytanie o to, że jest wspaniałym następcą Jasona Krampa, który był ostatnim australijskim mistrzem świata. Mówi, że bardzo się cieszy z tego, że on akurat zastępuje Jasona, że bardzo mu pomógł, że w całej tej sytuacji też mu pomógł, że zabrał go gdzieś tam w zacisze, że porozmawiali, że to go uspokoiło i że to się wszystko tak fantastycznie skończyło dla tej radosnej australijskiej rodziny. Są kangury, są flagi australijskie na trybunach. Cóż... U nas tutaj było gorąco, teraz pytanie. 
Zobaczymy jak gorąco jest, czy w naszym studiu, czy w naszej loży, czy... Człowiek na świecie, w żużlowym świecie. Są szampany, były piękne puchary, nie ma dzisiaj medali, medale zostaną wręczone tym zawodnikom w terminie późniejszym. Będą oczywiście gale, podsumowania, różne imprezy okolicznościowe po sezonie. No i wielka radość, ależ to będą piękne zdjęcia dla fotoreporterów. A propos medali, to słyszałem, że zbyt wiele medali zostało rozdanych po mistrzostwach juniorów i no niestety film gdzieś szukało jednego z medali, żeby rozdać dzisiaj i przez to właśnie zabrakło. Co ty opowiadasz? Nie, medale, na, pew na pewno ci trzej dżentelmeni medale dostaną. Tak, tylko najpierw trzeba je wypuć. Chris Holder będzie oczywiście na gali. Ty wiesz, Adasiu, gdzie jest mistrzowska gala w tym roku? Nie Portugalia? Nie, nie a to, jeszcze, to jeszcze ustalimy. Chris Holder na pewno będzie tam zaproszony wspólnie z, podobnie jak inni mistrzowie dyscyplin żużlopodobnych, nazwijmy to, jak mistrz świata na lodzie, Nikołaj Krasnikow, jak mistrz świata juniorów, jak mistrz świata na długim torze i tak dalej, i tak dalej. Zakończyło się finałowe odliczanie. Dziesiątki, dziesiątki zdjęć. Ja może odpowiem Ci taką anegdotę. Pamiętasz, jak spotkaliśmy się z Chrisem Holderem na takim spotkaniu, na takim party po Grand Prix w Cardiff? Tam był taki niepozorny chłopak, mniej więcej Twojego wzrostu, może trochę mniejszy. O, zaraz, to był niepozorny. Magik. To był magik, to był iluzjonista, tak utalentowany w wieku około 23-25 lat i on chodził, bawił publiczność podczas y, tego, tego party różnymi sztuczkami. Kiedy dowiedział się, że na to party przybył w końcu Chris Holder, zwycięzca Grand Prix w Cardiff ze swoją y, narzeczoną, Sally właśnie, postanowił przygotować no już taki numer, że... No nie uwierzycie Państwo, w pewnym momencie kazał narzeczonej Seli napisać na karcie do gry numer swojego telefonu komórkowego na przykład i ona zielonym flamastrem napisała, później on na drugiej karcie napisał swoje jakieś tam wygibasy, kazał jej kartę włożyć sobie zgiętą na cztery do ust, on włożył swoją do ust, potarli się noskami tymi kartami, co się okazało? że te karty w międzyczasie nie wiadomo, w którym momencie zostały zamienione. To był jego mistrzowski trik, ale tłumaczył później, że jednak dłonie ludzkie są szybsze niż oko i że takie rzeczy można zrobić. Zdziwił się też... Going off the inside is Jare Campbell in red. Adrian Mazinski goes off gate number two in blue. Christoph Kasperzak gate three in white. And Ty Woffenden going off the outside in yellow. That's your lineup for heat number five. A win for Woffenden and a third or fourth for Hampel. And Woffenden can win it here and now. Huge pressure on heat number five. But there's pressure on Hampel as well, Kelvin. Absolutely. He has to keep winning races. He needs to keep it simple. Far himself to the front and really wind it on. As I say, there are three Polish riders here. Wiffenden will have to do the hard yards. He's been doing it all season long. Can he clinch it in heat five? Big race here, heat number five. And Wiffenden's made a decent one, but it's a very close call. Wiffenden's going wide. Hampel's got the lead here. Yara Kampel has that lead. And here comes Wiffenden around the outside. Ty Wiffenden is a hero here. Second place, Yara Kampel. Wiffenden has that lead. This will put him up to four points. Third place now. The rider in blue is Adrian Matinski. Kelvin, what a hero! Mizinski. And Woffington is, and Hampel's got to third! Mizinski's going to clinch the World Championship, possibly for Ty Woffington. Woffington brilliant on the opening lap. Now, all of a sudden, with Hampel relegated to third place, the World Championship is there to be won for Woffington. Out in front, riding an absolute stormer. Ty Woffington is just over one lap away from becoming World Speedway Champion. Who'd have thought it could be all over as early as Heat 5? Riding just a fortnight after suffering a fractured collarbone. Ty Woffington is going to come round to take the jacket flag. Great Britain has a world speedway champion for the first time in 13 years. It's Woffy, Woffy, Woffy. What a moment in British speedway. Fantastic ride from Ty Woffington.
opening lap as he went round the back straight. Happel got relegated to third place from Adrian Mazinski, who did his compatriot. No favours whatsoever, but Woodrum no, won't worry about that. He's the new World Speedway Champion for 2013. Many congratulations. He has been outstanding this season. Broken his collarbone on two occasions. Seals the deal here in Heat 5. What a performance. What a season. Sensational. Who can deny in this moment what a fairy tale it is? Brought back into the Grand Prix by the organisers this year. Huge odds when he was brought back in with the bookmakers to be world champion. The story of this young man, born in Scunthorpe. His father passed away just weeks before his first Grand Prix campaign in 2010. He is a British World Speedway champion. And that's the first time you can say that in 13 years. Mark Lauren was the last man who did that. He is in Torren. And uh, Peter Adams with Ty Woffenden and Ty McSue. Emotional seats here, fabulous seats. His mother, of course, delighted to have done it. But his girlfriend on hand as well. Got to say, he has thoroughly deserved it. What a, what a season. Coming back into the series, as you rightly say, one or two out of is certainly the race when he was given the opportunity to come back. But by golly, he's taken the opportunity with both hands. Has been supremely consistent. Terenzano, when he put that huge performance in there, possibly was the turning point in the championship chase. Congratulations my other riders. Well, he has fully deserved it. World champion. Well, that's going to uh, sound very sweet. Greg Hancock, former world champion. One of the first to congratulate him alongside Darcy Ward. They're big pals. And what a story. Mark Loram, Britain's last world champion in 2000. And there he is, congratulating Ty. Mark Loram in Torrent tonight to congratulate Ty Woffenden. What a scene, what a story. Bruce Pennell is here tonight, the twice world champion. Of course, uh, it's great to see Chris Holder is here as well, the outgoing world champion. What a story, what a fairy tale. He, this young man now, is going to get so much focus and uh, so many headlines, and it really is quite a story. It is indeed. It's been uh, a sensational season for him. Ty Woffenden, world champion. Mate, what a feeling, eh? It's um, oh, I don't even I don't even know what to say. I'm so excited. I'm a bit speechless, you know. I've um, <clears throat> been working so hard for it this season, and um, you know, dreams have come true. Word from Mum. Oh, it's just great to have you. You know, they've <clears throat> they've given up a lot over the years to <clears throat> to get to me to get me to where I am, and um, it's just nice to give something back. Someone missing as well. Yeah, he's up there watching me. Well done. Thank you. And it's easy to overlook the fact, and we saw it in the replays, Kelvin, that it was a quite spectacular ride from Ty to win the world title yeah. in Heat 5. He, he really had to go wide and got the drive. Absolutely. Here we are in 2013, and Great Britain has a new world speedway champion in Ty Woffenden. What a story, what a night. And it really has been a year to remember in the Speedway Grand Prix. It has. And the whole of British Speedway, I'm sure, will unite to congratulate Ty Woffenden. Let the celebrations begin here in Torren. Champagne time, fabulous scenes. Absolutely dead right, Nights. Let the celebrations begin. I thought we might see this two weeks ago. We've had to be patient. Certainly Ty Woffenden had to be very patient indeed. But uh, he sealed it in five star here tonight. And uh, the new World Speedway champion got an awful lot to look forward to, but right now he won't be thinking about too much into the future, he'll just want to enjoy a great night. Yep, very much so, and uh, he'll attend a press conference here in the stadium. Hopefully we'll get some reaction from Ty very soon as well, just to get his thoughts. Perhaps this is the time where it does start to sink in, and over the course of the next few weeks as well. Liczyć, więc dobrze, że liczyć i chyba faktycznie wychodzi na to, że za chwilę Greg Hancock z tego drugiego, drugiego pola startowego, jeśli się nie mylimy, to prawdopodobnie dwa punkty. Podpowiadają też nam nasi koledzy, że dwa punkty 
wystarczą w tym momencie Amerykaninowi do tego, żeby sięgnąć po trzeci tytuł indywidualnego mistrza świata. To myślisz, nie będzie. Że o tym wie? Nie, nie będzie łatwo tym. Myślę, że nie. A ty myślisz, że wie? Myślę, że wie. <laughs> no to zapytamy na pewno. Zobaczysz, go tam jak skończy wyjść. Dorwą nasi koledzy. Jarosław Kampel musi walczyć ze wszystkimi tutaj z Lindgrenem. Szczególnie musi być przed zawodnikiem, który jest na torze trzecim. Polak na pierwszym. Greg Hancock przy nim na drugim polu startowym. Na czwartym Pedersen, który tutaj będzie gryzł za chwilę wszystkich, bo walczy o swój kolejny indywidualny medal. Jedziemy. Dobrze Jarek Kampel. Dobrze także Greg Hancock. Pedersen się w to wszystko miesza. Lindgren ostro postawiło go. Hancock jest trzeci. Nie ma na razie złota, ale wchodzi zdecydowanie. Prowadzi Fremniki Pedersen. On jest pierwszy. Greg Hancock na drugim miejscu. To mu daje tytuł mistrza świata. Trzeci jest Jarosław Kampel. Ważne, że przynajmniej przed Fredką Lindgrenem prowadzi Niki Pedersen, czyli to jest jazda po pozycję medalową. Greg Hancock urodzony w 1970 roku. Być może za chwilę najstarszy w historii mistrz świata. Jeszcze jedno okrążenie, a Greg dobiera się do Nikiego Pedersena. Jak już przechodzić do historii, no to z pełnym impetem. Niki Pedersen pierwszy, Greg Hancock drugi, Jarek Hampel przed Lindgrenem. To jest bardzo ważne. Ostatni historyczny łuk. Tak piszemy historię Speedwaya. Niki Pedersen trzy punkty, nieważne. Californication, Greg Hancock, mistrzem świata w 2014 roku. Moto Arena na stojąco fetuje ten sukces zawodnika, któremu chyba wszyscy są życzliwi, o którym wszyscy myślą ciepło. Zwracam honor, wiedział, że dwójka wystarczy. Greg Hancock, mistrzem świata. Wielkie brawa dla Grega. Nie ma chyba takiej osoby, która nie cieszy się w tej chwili z jego e, zwycięstwa, z jego triumfu, ponieważ nawet ci, którzy próbowali jeszcze z nim walczyć, e, tak naprawdę w podświadomości nie mieli wielkich nadziei, że to się stanie i, i myślę, że też cieszą się, że właśnie to Amerykanie zostali mistrzem świata i podejmują walkę o dalsze e, pozycje. Greg nie wystartował najlepiej, nie ułożył mu się ten pierwszy łuk e, najlepiej. Była sytuacja, ale zrobił miejsca na trasie tak naprawdę. Dokładnie, widzieliśmy wyjście z pierwszego Koniec łuku. Grand Prix, zobacz co się dzieje. <laughs> Dziękuję, podium, do widzenia, dobranoc, good evening, bye bye. A my name is Greg Henko. Ciao. Gasimy światło. Tak jest, gasi światło. Lecimy. No i wybiegają kolejni zawodnicy z parku maszyn, żeby fetować, fetować mistrza świata. Greg Henko. Maciej Ganowski, Chris Golder, Ty Wolfinger. Wszyscy jego najwięksi przyjaciele. 44 lata i 130 dni ma dzisiaj Greg Henko, kiedy przychodził na świat. Prezydentem Stanów Zjednoczonych był Richard Nixon. Koszulki oczywiście przygotowane w amerykańskim stylu, jak w NBA, jak w NFL. Greg Henko miał być mistrzem i załatwił to w trzecim swoim wyścigu. Greg Henko, człowiek instytucja. O, proszę bardzo. Piękne symboliczne przekazanie. Taki młody, a tutaj... Jenny, małżonka oczywiście... Także uradowana. Wielkie brawa dla Grega Henkoka. Jeden turniej w historii opuścił. W tym sezonie, kiedy sięga po Mistrzostwo Świata, kiedy zostaje po raz kolejny najlepszym zawodnikiem na kuli ziemskiej, Greg Henkok. Niesamowity charakter, niesamowity człowiek. To o tym wszyscy mówimy bardzo często. Jaki on jest fajny, jaki on jest uśmiechnięty, ale jaki to jest tytan pracy, jaki to jest sportowy.
Well, Jenny Hancock, uh, Greg's wife there, with Faye, who is uh, Ty Woffenden's partner as well. And the new world champion is with Chris Louie. FIM Speedway Grand Prix champion 2014, Greg Hancock, how does it feel? Green to win. It feels Nailed goddamn. it, mate. Nailed Excuse it. Excuse my French. Uh, unbelievable. Right now, it's just overwhelming. You know, <laughs> I'm going to lose it. <laughs> this is unbelievable. There's so much hard work and um, too many people to thank right now. you got to give me a few minutes. We'll do that. I'm sure we're going to talk later on. But you went straight to the trophy and a great sporting gesture from the outgoing world champion, Ty Wolfen, to want to be there to hand it to you. Yeah, that was pretty cool. I mean, these guys, we've got a lot of respect amongst us. And I think, you know, in particular, Ty and, and uh, Chris and myself, we're, we're, you know, and Darcy, we're all really good buddies, a lot of us. So, uh, you know, it means a lot. I think this whole group of riders is pretty darn good and a lot of respect for each other. So uh, this is Speedway. It's been a hard slog out there, though, since Gorgio laying on the track with the hand broken. Any doubt in your mind at that point? Yeah, I had a lot of doubts. I had a lot of anger, you know, why me, all that kind of stuff. But bottom line, it was just a finger. And, uh, you know, I wouldn't be here today if I couldn't ride. So uh, what can I say? There's a lot. My doctors, uh, Dr. Gravander in Sweden, who put me in touch with Dr. Zeb at the Hand Center in Gothenburg. And then lots and lots of follow-up treatment with Okis Nelstrom and Rose Logs Clinic. And so without those guys, I wouldn't be here today, I promise. You're here, you've won the World Championship in front of the family as well. I believe your brother's here from the States, his first ever Grand Prix, that's special. Yeah, it's awesome. He flew in from Chicago a couple of days ago, and the last time he saw me in Europe was 1992. So a little bit has changed since then. And uh, I'm stoked that he's here. I'm stoked that my wife and the kids are here. And so many fam, my nephew from the States and buddies I rode Speedway with, Jesse and uh, Jason. And man, there's so many that are here. And Gert and Mate and, and Marcus and Pat and the Dirty Dogs. We're back. We're going to be talking to you later on. Congratulations, Greg Hancock. Hey, I love you guys. <laughs> well, that's marvellous, isn't it? And, uh, and you can't speak highly enough for him. He, he's uh, quite, you know, in every right They've made to those field. quick, haven't they? He has indeed. Yeah, that's um, fresh off the press, aren't they? But, uh, yeah, it is, it is an <laughs> incredible story. And it will be one that we'll be chatting about for some time. And there will be strong debate about whether he has achieved it something. Is, it? it is. It is extra special. And... You know, I don't quite know how long he's going to ride, ride on for. You know, we, we keep going on about it. He's in his mid-40s now, but he shows no signs of slowing down. So, Mickey Pedersen put three fingers up there. He's a three times world champion. And so is Greg Hancock now. And uh, the presentation of the trophy That's a beautiful from Joe trophy, Parsons you know. of Monster Energy, who is particularly close to Greg as well, who's a Monster Energy rider. Yeah, well, Monster Energy have had a hugely successful time in Speedway. They've won the world championship the last three years. Yeah, uh, fantastic moment. And of course, Monster Energy confirmed um, as part of the GP series again yesterday. Good news. Yeah. And uh, well, I'm sure <clears throat> this is the moment where uh, all the photographers get their picture that they want and the champagne will start to flow. Yeah, champagne moments here. These two, three riders have battled awfully hard. Of course, they've had their injury problems. All three of them have had injury problems throughout the year. Uh, Greg's missed the start here. Uh, he hasn't managed to get his champagne working, and it's the first start that he's missed all season long, Nigel. It's, um, uh, he's getting absolutely filled in massively here. <laughs> Nicky's, Nicky's having a go at Christoph, getting a bit of revenge back there. <laughs> Fab Good stuff. Fabulous Good stuff. scenes there, and uh, a fitting way to finish the Grand Prix series off. It's been a lovely, it's been a fantastic season, hasn't it? You know, we've had That's our ups it. and downs. Give a helping hand. Come That's on, help right. him, boys. Yeah, he still hasn't got That's off the start That's line, finally. We get there. Yeah. Come on, champ. <laughs> Come on, join in the fun. You've done it before, twice. He has, indeed. <laughs> no, what a marvellous yeah, career. He's only missed one Grand Prix. Yeah. You yeah. know, he didn't turn up in Voyance. Can you believe Poor it? Effort. Poor, Poor effort. Poor effort, yeah. 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 He let us down there, didn't yeah, he? But he did, yeah. He, he certainly got <laughs> us back in fine style subsequently, didn't he? Yeah. And uh, terrific scenes. And uh, I do hope I have the opportunity to congratulate him in person, guys, wouldn't it? It'll be lovely. Because he's an easygoing guy and he's always got time for you. He's yeah. always got time to chat. Very much so. Yeah. Well done, Greg Hancock. Brilliant stuff. And uh, Nicky, Nicky looks like he's enjoying himself now. He was a, a little bit. Here with Tony Olsen, Kel. Sorry to interrupt, but they're, they're doing a photograph of the race director, Tony Olsen, because this is Tony's last meeting mm. as race director. 
So nice that they've, uh, I'm sure he only went up for a photograph, but he ended up with champagne all down his he back. He's a shower now. <laughs> well, he's just been showered in champagne, so he's going to be feeling a little bit uncomfortable. But Nicky Pedersen, they're having a chat with him about it. Yeah. Nicky seems to have relaxed a wee bit. I think he, he's beginning to realise now that actually, although he feels aggrieved, he's, he got the job done in the end. Yeah. And he did it in a way that was actually very, very impressive. So... Yeah, I think once he gets over the emotions and the anger of it all, I think he should feel very proud of himself. Well, we are going to hear from the new world champion again. Pictures first. Great moment for Greg Hancock. It really is a remarkable story at the age of 44. I do know that um, Toron, it's Greg Hancock going off the inside gate in red, eight points to his name. Jason Doyle goes off gate number two in blue with Matt Sienowski gate three in white and Chris Holder going off the outside in yellow. So, if he fails to score, we're going to have a new world champion. Yep, so here we go, semi-final number one here in Torren and the tape tries and it's a great start for the man off gate number two, Jason Doyle, who really has a fabulous night tonight. It's had a fantastic night and Hancock's gone to the back and this will be a big moment because Wolfenden would win it here without turning a wheel. The lead is with Doyle, second place is Holder, Janowski is third, Hancock is uh, now challenging uh, Janowski here but has gone to the back and now we are potentially halfway through, almost halfway through a race which will see a new world champion crowd. But what a race here and Hancock is struggling. Hancock is struggling now. Yeah, it looks like he might have a punch in Nigel. Brilliant stuff from Yanovsky to get the better of Holder. Holder going uh, into third place. Hancock's out the back. No question about that. Looking like we could have another new world champion. Holder certainly pushing on in third. Jason Doyle looking like he could make his final for the first time. Jason Doyle on his way through to the final, but this is the moment where Ty Woffenden will be crowned world speedway champion. Doyle the winner. Great stuff from him. Magnificent ride from Jason Doyle. But that man now knows, with Greg Hancock's results, that Ty Woffenden of Great Britain has just won his second world title in three years. It's a fairy tale story. He failed to make the semi finals, but Ty Woffenden of Great Britain is now confirmed as the 2015 World Speedway Champion. What a fabulous performance it's been. He was nearly lost to the sport a few years back. He came back into the Grand Prix series, won in 2013, just didn't do the business last year. Comes up with a terrific performance level this year. The consistency, the speed shown, not ideal doing it. Watch one of your best friends not scored points but that has resulted in him winning his second world title in three years celebration times the emotions now beginning to be shown tears of joy running down his cheeks it is a special moment for the man and you can't deny Nigel this year he has been the outstanding rider some Doyle but well done to Ty Woffenden he is the new world champion with a meeting to spare yeah brilliant uh, performance from him it didn't look like it was gonna happen he sort of rode his luck there didn't he when he hasn't had the best of nights bike hasn't been quite set up as he would have liked congratulations all round but uh, you know something quite clearly went wrong with uh, Greg Hancock's bike there he had no pace at all there's the uh, congratulations for Hancock his uh, reign as world champion is now over and the new world champion his reign begins super super season he's enjoyed and it has been a uh, special three years for him
Ty Woffenden is the new world speedway champion and we get first reaction from the champion with Chris Louie. Ty Woffenden back on top of the world, two times world champion, sounds good doesn't it? Oh it does, you know, um, so emotional. Um, <laughs> I worked so hard for that all year, you know, and uh, <clears throat> when it, uh, <clears throat> I can't even talk, <laughs> when it, um, when it happens how it needs to happen and, uh, and you do work hard, it, it just means so much. You won the championship in 2013, you had to regroup last year, it's got to be good to be back on top. You know, I, uh, I needed that last year. Uh, it was, uh, was kind of something to level my head a little bit. Um, you know, when you win your first one, you can uh, let it get to you a little bit. And I didn't work as hard as I should have in the winter and uh, was just playing catch up all year. Uh, I had a hand injury, but, um, you know, the last three, three years I've proved that it's not just a one off. And, um, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll be stronger, fitter, faster next year. You grew up in Australia. We go to Melbourne for the last round. You can relax, enjoy your win so far, and go out for another one. I can't wait, you know, but, uh, you know, massive thanks to all the fans that made the trip out here. Um, you are amazing. Uh, thanks to all my team, you know, them boys work so hard and uh, johnsy has been working hard with my engines and, you know, we, we, we talk a lot and we, you know, focus on what we need to do. And, and the best thing is, you know, I'm not just riding one engine everywhere. I'm, I'm picking out of like four or five which one I want to ride at which track and, um, you know, to have that many engines in the in the workshop that you can just ride and, and go fast on, it's amazing and uh, you know plenty of engine checks this year so for all the people saying that they were big they're not and um, plenty of drug tests as well so uh, yeah it's uh, it's great you know prove the prove the doubt is wrong and uh, and the fans that back me you know I love you all. Congratulations Ty you deserved it. I'm just gonna dedicate that one to to you Darcy um, stay strong buddy and uh, Mika Mascan as well, uh, you know, he had another, another crash riding motocross and, uh, you know, life-changing injury. So uh, I wish them boys all the best and um, stay strong, keep working hard. And, uh, you know, you, you both of you have proved that whatever you put your mind to, you can succeed. And uh, this is just another challenge. So knock it down and keep going. Well done, Ty. Wonderful pitches. Try to test the authenticity of the, of the FIM gold medal. And the obligatory champagne as the, uh, the monster energy girls disappear as quickly as possible. I hope they get Ty and soak him to the core. This must be a tremendous feeling for elite sportsmen. Absolutely nothing better. You must miss it. You've got to miss it. No, it was beyond me when I stopped riding, so it's very much beyond me right now. But I know how he feels and, uh, you know, all those hours of gym work and training and testing and everything else you have to do. This is, these are the moments when you forget how much effort you put in and you just enjoy the moment. It's a very full-on pursuit. So many race fixtures throughout a nine-month season. The Grand Prix Series and the other league racing that they undertake running teams in numerous nations a, a host of bikes and machinery and mechanics and vehicles and aeroplane rides and service sponsors it, it goes on and on the negotiate list goes on contracts and on. it is a massive pursuit Podium this is selfie. becoming uh, very much in vogue isn't it the old selfie he just tossed his phone away like it was a boomerang. Didn't come back though. No, that's true. I think he was hoping it would though. I don't want to sound like a broken record. It has been one of the most memorable Speedway Grand Prix I've ever witnessed. Such a fascinating night indoors at Etihad Stadium in Melbourne. Repeating the crowd, a fraction over 27,000 people. An outstanding result for the inaugural staging of this event. Fantastic event, fantastic track, fantastic stadium, great city. You know, there's, how could we have improved that? Maybe if Jason Doyle would have won the Grand Prix, but Greg Hancock, a deserved winner. Everybody's gonna go away from this event tonight, remembering what it, how good it was. 
and hopefully they come back in droves again next year. So, Ty Wolfenden. for the fourth time yeah uh, Greg's got a thousand and one things going through his mind at the moment it's a it's a position that uh, it's a it's a tough position gate two and Linky the pole on the outside in yellow away we go Hancock got away beautifully has he got to the front indeed he has he's a rider up high on the circuit Pat Linky and Pat Linky the pole has the audacity to pass Greg Hancock on the outside they're side by side onto the main straightaway and also very quick is Sweden's Frederick Lindgren what a race in heat four what a first turn from Pavlicki, here comes Greg. Greg's come up the inside of Pavlicki there. That's the World Championship. Greg Hancock at 46 years of age means business. Does he ever Pavlicki in second? He's not done with just yet. Lap three of four. And have a look at these two at the back, Lindgren and Lindback racing each other. Yeah, a couple of Swedes working each other over. Yellow flag, one lap of Etihad Stadium to negotiate. Greg Hancock, if he stays where he is, he will be the 2016 World Speedway Champion. The fourth time he has achieved such a milestone. An off turn four, he's done it again. Greg Hancock <laughs> is the world champion for the fourth time. What And what a way to do it. He, he fought and put himself in a position there where he had to overtake Pavlicki and look at him. Absolutely wrapped for Greg. Thoroughly deserves it. Outstanding professional. Uh, what more can you say about the man? He's an absolute freak. <laughs> For his age, he is an extraordinary athlete. And he thoroughly deserves it. A nicer man you would never meet. Works so hard on and off the track. One of the all-time greats. As you say, Greg, he is a nice guy. But there's one thing that Greg is. He's a hard but fair competitor. And Greg's... Greg's respected by almost every rider in the world because of the way he's conducted himself on and off the track. He was a pleasure to race against in, in, in my heyday. You know, Greg and I fought hard for race wins and championships along the way and uh, couldn't happen to a nicer guy. I know it seems, I suppose, strange celebrating the World Championship after this four heats, but of course, it's vital you keep watching. There are so many other things to unfold here tonight. Here's his Greg team. Hancock, the adulation from his crew and the fans. Gee, I wish he'd have a good time, Greg. He doesn't look happy. <laughs> oh, come on. They call him the Grin, that's his nickname. And right now, can I tell you something? He's smiling like a carpet snake in a foul house. <laughs> yeah, um, look at that. The mechanics put a hell of a lot of effort in as well, and uh, they deserve a lot of credit a lot for, for the work they do. Ty Wolfenden, outgoing world champion, one of the first on the scene to congratulate him. The thing about Greg Hancock, he is so professional, he'll go back to the pits, he'll take a deep breath, and he'll get his race face back on, and he won't want to lose another race tonight. Yeah, and that's that's a sign of his the way Greg is, you know. It's um, Personally, I could never do it. Whenever I got the points to win the championship, I was quite happy to sit down in the pits and pretty much go and ride around. But uh, we'll, we'll see what we'll see what it does to Greg tonight. But again, the way he looked in that race, you wouldn't argue against him going through the card or certainly putting himself into the final in tonight's event. Greg Hancock, job done. Here you can say that again. I think my voice is gone already. <laughs> and mine. Um, Ivan Major, Tony Rickardson, Barry Briggs, Obi Funden, Hans Nielsen all won the World Championship four times. You're in that club now. Oh man, say no more. I, I'm going to lose it. <laughs> this is like incredible. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, sir. Listen, I'm going to let you gather your thoughts and we'll catch you again later in the meeting. There is a race meeting on. I'm sure you want to do well on that as well. Eric Gunderson, we made a deal a few weeks back. I want to see you walk, buddy, and I got your helmet. Thank you, sir. Congratulations. Being a circus return down under with the staging of last year's event here at Etihad, he won that too. Tonight, 
just a bizarre set of circumstances involving him. But no one in the world will begrudge him the moment he currently enjoys a nicer human being you would never meet. Great competitor as well. Um, fair, but hard. And here comes the champagne for the boys. So Greg Hancock, Ty Wolfenden, Bartosz Marslik. Top three in what has been an epic season. Bigger and better, the 2017 Speedway Grand Prix Series promises to be a number of key dates already announced likewise with the uh, monster energy world cup world team cup so much to look forward to congratulations to everyone associated with the staging of the australian grand prix here tonight Got to give a wrap to uh, the track build team as much as anybody because, as without saying, if the racetrack is not conducive to good speedway, you don't see it. We've seen it in spades again tonight, as was the case last last year. Fantastic speedway event. Highly enjoyable night of international sport under the roof of this magnificent stadium, Etihad, one of the world's best sporting stadiums. They host well in excess of 80 sporting events here each year. Everything from football, the various codes to cricket, of course, uh, major rock concerts, Coldplay are performing here in December. A very, very busy stadium in terms of the volume of major international and domestic sporting events jason been an absolute pleasure to work with you tonight congratulations uh, on providing our viewers around the world with such an expert's analysis of what's been going on great event to be part of david and uh, hopefully it can go bigger and better in the future and uh, the future of australian speedway certainly looks bright when we can have an event like this here and bring the world's best riders great to be part of very proud as an Australian Speedway rider. I'd suggest that the uh, the future for international Speedway is looking very bright as well, such as the remarkable young talent coming through the sport. Greg Hancock, the 2016 World Speedway Champion. To jest rzecz przechodząca wyobrażenie. Każdy punkt zdobyty w tym wyścigu da mu tytuł mistrza świata. Pierwsze pole startowe Piotr Pawlicki, na drugim Taj Wolfinden. I akurat chyba w tej sytuacji już nie miałbym nic przeciwko temu, żeby Doyle założył Wolfindena, a Brytyjczyk w kontekście walki jeszcze Macieja Nowskiego o medale, o medal. Gdzieś tam tutaj te punkty znowu pogubił, uzupełnia stawkę sam. Masters walczył cały Rok walczył dwa lata po to, żeby wznieść najcenniejsze żużlowe indywidualne trofeum na świecie. Jason Doyle, jego postawa, jego determinacja zachwyca nawet tych, którzy nie uwielbiają go jako żużlowca. Jason Doyle w drodze po tytuł mistrza świata trzecie pole startowe taśma. W górze problemy Jasona Doyla wypchnięty przez Wofindena. Co zrobi Australijczyk teraz cały świat? Patrzy na to, co wyprawia Jason Jak on to zrobił, jak on chce być najlepszy na świecie. Przeszkadza mu Piotr Pawlicki, ale Jason Doyle prowadzi w tym wyścigu po akcji najlepszej w tym turnieju. Po akcji, jaką po prostu za chwilę będzie wpisywał przy swoim nazwisku, bo zaczyna jechać najbardziej widowiskowo na świecie. Jason Doyle właśnie w tych momentach, kiedy trzeba tego najbardziej za półtora okrążenia będzie mistrzem świata. Jason Doyle nic mu już z tego nie zabierze. Nie ma takiej siły za to ostatnie okrążenie. I za chwilę dołączę do największych. Lionel Van Praak, Wilkinson, Young, Kramp, Holder. A teraz 
szóstym australijskim mistrzem świata zostaje Jason Doyle! Jason Doyle! Jason Doyle! Terminator z Newcastle! Gość, który napisał w tym roku jedną z najbardziej heroicznych historii w dziejach motorsportu. To nie są przesadzone słowa. Jego walka, jego determinacja, jego upór to jest coś, nad czym trzeba się i czemu trzeba się pokłonić. Sportowiec w najbardziej drapieżnym możliwym znaczeniu tego słowa. I wszyscy bijemy mu teraz brawo i bije mu brawo Grzesiek Zengota, bo to jest chwila triumfu, uporu na jaki stać tylko największych. Zgodzisz się ze mną? Zgadzam się z tobą, Tomek, w 100%. To, co zrobił Jason po przegranym starcie praktycznie, to jemu zdecydowanie należało się najbardziej. Ten złoty krążek, cały sezon ze złamaną nogą, jego mimo to i potrafił zdobywać punkty, wygrywać, więc yy, szacuneczek Jason, ręce składają się same do klasków. Tobie należało się najbardziej. Wielka klasa. Mistrzem świata 2017 zostaje Australijczyk Jason Doyle. Zawodnik bardzo doświadczony, zawodnik, którego droga na szczyt najbardziej ekstremalnego sportu świata była niezwykle ciężka i skomplikowana. Zresztą pewnie w przerwie opowie o niej trener Marek Cieślak o tym, że zaczynał w innej dyscyplinie, że był w stanie się przestawić z kompletnie dwóch innych sportów Jason Doyle, że zaczął żużel, że ten żużel przeszedł w nim wszystkie możliwe szczeble. Przecież kilka lat temu jeszcze jeździł, jeździł w trzeciej polskiej lidze, a później za chwilę stanie tak naprawdę na, na szczycie po bardzo, bardzo wyboistej drodze i to są niezwykle odwyrachowane i że nerwy ma ze stali. Jemu zdarzało się zapalić i na tym budowaliśmy jakieś nadzieje na polskie złoto, bo on musiałby mieć katastrofalny turniej. To nie mógłby być turniej, żeby Patryk Dudek był mistrzem, w którym Jasonowi nie wyjdą dwa biegi. To tylko jakaś absolutna klapa i właśnie głowa, która w tym sporcie jest przecież tak istotna, mogła jeszcze dać jakieś szanse. Natomiast no tu pokazał, że nie było o czym gadać tak naprawdę. Trzy wyścigi, trzy zwycięstwa, full koncentracja, no i żadnych absolutnie wątpliwości będziemy mieli chyba małą niespodziankę w procedurze, no ale jak u siebie się będzie odbierać za chwilę tytuł i złoty medal, to pewnie można sobie pozwolić na lekkie zaburzenie tej procedury turniejowej i rozmowę z mistrzem świata. Można sobie przeprowadzić. Słuchamy szczęśliwego człowieka spełnionego sportowca Jasona Doyla. I've got to ask you some questions, and I don't know what to ask you, but um, I, I spoke to you before that race. Um, you didn't look like you were in a good place there for about five minutes. You, you went out and, and produced the first corner out of the textbook. It was fantastic. Under The pressure you're under, uh, undescribable. Hey, the worst thing was after Torrin, it was three weeks later. Uh, these are the eyes of not sleeping for three weeks. I've been stressing out, trying to calculate. My, my head's at the moment a calculator, and... Tonight, uh, my family's been put through so much. Also, a lot of friends, uh, they, they know how much I wanted this after last year's injury. And I, I don't know, mate. I can't believe it. It's unbelievable. Well, it takes a little while to sink in. We, you know, we understand that. To be able to lift the ground here. W takich chwilach, natomiast jedną rzecz powiedział bardzo ważną, za chwilę jeszcze o tym. Wydaje mi się, że jest już konkretnie wzruszony Jason Doyle, bo głos mu się zaczyna łamać. Oczy troszeczkę szklić, mówi o tym, jak ważne były te trzy zwycięstwa w trzech otwierających seriach, jak one pozwoliły mu no już w tym momencie świętować i teraz... Nie ma stresu, bo przyznał w pierwszej swojej części wypowiedzi, że trzy tygodnie, które dzieliły ten turniej od Torunia, to był dla niego bardzo trudny czas. Oczywiście teraz podziękowania dla kibiców, dla rodziny, o której także wspomniał, że przyjechała razem z przyjaciółmi w bardzo dużej liczbie. No i podziękowania dla żony i ślub, całkiem niedawno zresztą Jasona Doyla. Wracając do tych trzech tygodni, przyznał, że przez ten czas po prostu źle spał, że 
wiedział, że duża jest przewaga, jaka szansa będzie przed nim, natomiast to nie był jeszcze w żadnym stopniu zagwarantowany sukces, trzeba było tutaj pojechać, przyjechać, pojechać jak najlepiej, żeby teraz odbierać gratulacje od Jasona Krampa, trzykrotnego mistrza świata. So here we go, semi-final two. Everson off the inside, smartly off two. Gate three is tied Woffen in white, one point for the title. Or any points dropped by Smarslik. And Greg Hancock is off the outside in yellow. Here we go, heat 22, and away they go. And Everson has made a good start, but Smarslik's there. Now, what about this, because Everson's going to take Smarslik wide. Is there any room for Woffen? Yes, there is, he's coming through, and Woffenden now is in second place here. Oh, this is heat 22, drama in the extreme. Oh. One last bit here from Smarsling, surely. Woffenden's going to stay out of trouble. Oh, Woffenden is on the way here now, Kelvin. Yeah, unbelievable speedway once again. Woffenden slams the door shut, Hancock's out the back. Everson doing the business off the inside, but Woffenden's got the speed in second place. Smarsling now winding it on. He wants to win the race. He wants to win the race. It's the safest place to be out in front, that's for sure. Everson riding. Oh, oh just for oh. a moment I thought Smarsling was going to wipe him out. Into the last lap, the world championship. He's going to do it now, Nice. He's going to nail it here. Ty Woffenden is half a lap away from making history. Ty Woffenden in the white helmet. He's going to be world speedway champion for a third time. Woffy, Woffy, Woffy. Three world titles and Great Britain's greatest ever rider in speedway history. What an honor of speedway. He has been through the mill tonight. He is now joining the greats of the sport, Nigel. Whoa, he's had to dig deep to do this. He's produced when he absolutely needed it to. Heat 20 is so important in the night. Rode strongly in the semi final. Ty Woofenden, world champion again. Three times in the last six seasons he's managed to do it. Outstanding achievement. What the- 
Wolfie!